Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the ATI T study manual, the sixth edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number. 156 and we are on page number 93 on page 100 on page 93 on page 93 right above the practice problems right above it it's important that you have the book in front of you so that you know what I'm talking about turn to page 93 and you will see that right above the practice problems there is a picture that is given to us a figure that is given to us and we, we are being asked to figure out its area and the perimeter that's exactly what we're going to do so we'll figure out the area and the perimeter. And the picture that is given to us looks something like this. We are told that this is a part of a rectangle, these three sides, and we are told that this is a semicircle. And A, B, C, D, we are told is a rectangle. We are told that this side is 9 feet long and this side is 6 feet long. The question simply is, what is the perimeter of this picture? And once we have the perimeter, the next question is, what is its area? So let's let's get going, shall we? Well, to figure out the perimeter of these three sides, so the sum of these three sides is 9 feet, this is 6 feet, and if this is A to D is 9 feet, then B to C is also 9 feet, because it's a rectangle, so that was easy. That was easy. I should not put this symbol here, because this symbol and this symbol means they are equal. So 9 plus 9 plus 6, 9 plus 9 plus 6, 9 plus 9. 9 plus 9 plus 6, I even said it and I wrote the wrong thing. 9 plus 9 is 18. 18 plus 6, how do we figure out 18 plus 6? Well, 18 plus 2 would have been 20. We have 4 more to go, so it's 24. 9 plus 9 plus 6 is 24 feet. 24 feet so far. That's the perimeter of these three sides. 1, A to D, D to C, and C to B. Now we have to go through and figure out the length of half the circle. The length of a circle is called the circumference. The perimeter of a circle is called circumference. We already learned it to figure out half the circumference. We know circumference of a circle is simply 2 pi r. Except here we are not interested in figuring out the entire circumference. We only want half of it. So let's divide both sides by 2. Divide this side by 2 and divide this side by 2 because we want half the circumference. Bring this equal sign down a little bit. So that represents half the circumference divided top and bottom by 2 and we get rid of this 2 and it turns out that half the circumference for this particular circle is simply, or well not, not this particular circle, any circle, half the circumference would be simply pi times r. Pi is simply 3.14. Oh, so since pi is not exactly 3.14, it's approximately 3.14. So we have to put approximate here. And what's the radius? How are we going to figure out radius? They, don't, they tell us nothing at all about the diameter. Well, this diameter of the circle, A to B, is the same distance as C to D. These two sides are equal to each other, and these two sides are equal to each other. So this is 6 feet from here to here. Therefore, the radius is half of that, which is 3 feet. The radius of the circle is 3 feet. There we go, we are done. That's your answer. That's the circumference of the half the circle. We have a couple of choices. We can multiply 3.14 by 3, or we can just leave it like that. We can simply say that this is, the circumference is equal to, Circumference is equal to circumference half the circumference rather is equal to three three pi feet. We could leave it like this and simply add this. So, so the total parameter is simply twenty four feet plus three pi feet three pi feet. And there is nothing wrong with it. It's absolutely fine. But if it turns out that the answers that are presented to you in the exams are numerical and therefore you need a numerical value, then you're going to have to plug in some value for pi and do it out. Just put in 3.14, that's approximation, approximate value. 3.14, we're just going to pretend is 314 for the time being, times 3. 3 times 4 is 12, that's 2, carry 1. 3 times 1 is 3, plus 1 is 4, 3, 3 is a 9, so it's 9.42. 9.42. You see how we, how we insert the decimal at the very end? At the very end, we insert the decimal which was here two decimal places. So decimal was here and when we finish this, we pick it up and put it here. It's 9.42. So it's 24 
24 plus 9.42 24 plus 9.42 so this is the approximate parameter why approximate parameter because here we substitute the value of pi as 3.14 which is not the exact value so we have to switch from equal sign to approximately equal 24 24 plus 10 would have been 34 so it's 33 33 parameter is approximately 33.42 feet you must you mustn't forget you mustn't forget the unit you can say it's 33.3 33.42 feet or you can simply say the parameter is approximately 33 and a half feet that's good enough also speak an answer twice that comes close to 30, 33 and a half feet let's do the area shall we area is a little tricky area is a little tricky so we're done with the parameter part now we'll do the area of this thing area is a little tricky not because it's difficult but it's going to require some some more calculations it's going to require a little bit more calculation. I just spilled some tea on my notes and it's going to bother me now. Okay, let's do the area first. We're done with the perimeter. Now we'll figure out the, per, uh, the area. We, again, we'll first start out with we'll first start out with the easy part, which is figuring out the area of, of this area of this rectangle. It's easy because it's simply 9 by 6. The area, this rectangle is just 9 by 6. So the area is going to be 9 by 6 and we shouldn't say just 9 by 6 we must put down the unit is 9 feet by 6 feet by 6 feet 9 6 of 54 how do I know that 9 6 of 54 well let's find out shall we how do we know that 9 6 of 54 because we know that if we have 10 6 10 6 10 6 is our 60 if you have 10 of them, uh, 1, 6, and another 6, and another 6, if you have 10 of the 6s, everybody knows that 10 times 6 is 60. It's very easy. If 10 6 is, if 10 6 is 60, then it stands to reason that 9 6 is, 9 6 is, would have to be 60 minus 6. We don't need 10 6s, we need 9 6s. 60 minus 6 is 54. Hence, we say 9 6s are 54. There you go. 54 what? What's the unit? Unit is feet times feet. Feet times feet is feet squared. The area of the rectangle is 54 square feet. Now let's figure out area of half the circle, which is going to require some calculation. How do we find area of a circle? Uh, area of a circle is simply pi r squared. Except we are not interested in finding out the area of the entire circle. We don't have a whole circle. We only have half a circle. We want to find out area of this guy. The other half of the circle does not exist. It doesn't exist. If you do whole circle, we'll end up double counting. We'll end up double counting this portion. We, this entire portion will end up double counting because first we'll count as half the circle, and then we count the same thing as the part of the rectangle. We'll end up double counting. We already counted this part. We already counted this part when we did area of the rectangle. Do you understand? That 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 thing is already in. It, it, it's already part of the rectangle. So we need half the circle. Half of the area, divide both sides by 2, and we'll get half the area. Well, let's see what that is. Pi, which is 3.14, times r squared, which is going to be 3 squared, over 2. We have several choices at this point. We have several choices as to, uh, at this point as to how we go about it. We can, say, we can simply say that it is... 3 squared is 9, so we can simply say that it is pi r squared, which is 9, right here, this is the 9 part, over 2. So we can say it is 9 halves pi, so I'll leave it like that. We can say that it is 9 halves pi, so I'll leave it like this. Or we can, we can say that 9 divided by 2 is 4 and a half, so it's 4.5 times pi, which is 3.14. 4.5 times 3.14, and do it out on the side, see what that is. Let's put it on the side. We, we, we're not going to worry about decimal right now. We're just going to write the whole number. 3.14 is 314 and 4.5 is 45. And see what we get. And we'll worry about the decimal at the very end. So let's get going, shall we? Stay with me in this story. 5 4 is a 20. 5 4 is a 20. If I have 1 5, 1 5 is just 1. 1 5 is just a 5. 
If I have two fives, two fives are ten. Two fives are ten. Five and a five. That's two fives are ten. Three fives are fifteen. Three fives are fifteen. Four fives are twenty. Twenty is zero. Carry two. Five ones are five. You see, five ones are five. How many five ones do we have? We have five of them. Five ones are five. Plus two is seven. Three fives are fifteen. We're done with the we're done with the unit digit. Now we're going to move on to ten digit. Hold the unit digit. Four fours are sixteen. That's six. Carry one. So carry one. Cross out the two and put a one there. Four ones are four. Plus a one is five. And four threes are twelve. Let's see what we get. We get zero. Six plus seven is thirteen. Three. Carry one. 5 plus 5 is 10 plus 1 is 11 1 carry 1 1 plus 1 is 2 plus 2 is 4 and 1 now the decimal where does the decimal go let's find out shall we where does the decimal go after how many places well this one was 3.14 that was the value of pi 3.14 we have a decimal here and this one was 4.5 it's not a 45 it's 4.5 so there is a decimal here so there is one decimal here and there are two decimal places here All together, three decimal places. Decimal place right now is sitting right here at the very end. That's where the decimal is right now. We don't write it, but it's, that's, it's there. Do you understand? So we move it three places. One, two, three. One. What's the answer? The answer would be fourteen point one four. Fourteen point one four. Fourteen point one four. What? Fourteen point one four square feet. Fourteen point one four square feet. Now what does this represent? This represents half the circle. So the total area, total area, would be the area of the rectangle which we found was 54 square feet and 14.13 square feet, 54 square feet and 14.13 square feet. We add them up and that's our final answer. So 0.13 is just going to come down. 4 plus 4 is 8. Looks like 68 square feet, approximately 68 square feet. The area of this thing is approximately 68 square feet. How else could we have done it? How else could we have solved this problem? Here's another way we could have done it. Now I'm going to show you. It's not going to change the answer, obviously, but just a slightly different approach. I need the room, so I'm going to erase this part. Watch what happens. We're going to we're going to erase this part, and we're going to pick up from here. Pi, which is 3.14 times r squared, which is 3 squared, and 3 squared is 9. Now watch what happens. I'm going to do this part, but I'm about to do this here so that you can follow it. We're going to divide 3.14 by 2. Before we didn't we divided 9 by 2, and we got 4.5. And we multiply 3.14 times 4.5, which was basically what we did before was what we did before was pi pi. This is pi times 9 over 2. That's what we did before. And 9 over 2 was the 4.5 part. Now instead of putting the instead of putting the 2 underneath 9, we're going to leave the 9 by itself and put a 2 here. Let's find out what 3.14 divided by 2 is. Do you know how to do that? Let's find out. Let's do it together. Shall we stay with me in the story? It's very simple. How many twos does three have? Three has only one two. Three is made up of only one two. After we after we took away the after we take away the two from the three, we have a remainder of one. What happens to that one? That one goes and joins this one. That one goes and joins this one. But before we do that, we have a decimal here, so we have to move the decimal up. And the remainder remaining one goes and joins this one and becomes eleven. How many twos? Because we're dividing that by two. How many twos does eleven have? Eleven has five twos. So that's that. That's not a one. That's eleven. Eleven has five twos. After we take away five twos, are ten. After we take away ten from the eleven, we have a remainder of one again. And what happens to that one? That one goes and joins this four and becomes fourteen. In other words, three point one four divided by two is fourteen. And if you had trouble following this thing, if you had trouble following this thing, you can do it here. The long division. The babyish with the long division, so you can see it. It's 3.14, which we're going to leave it as 3, which we're going to leave it right now as as just 314. Okay, watch. 
Okay. As we do it here, we're going to follow it here. So how many twos does three have? Three has one twos. Three has one twos. How many threes does how many how many twos does three have? Three has one twos. After we take away two from the three, we have a remainder of one. What happens to that one? That one goes and joins this one. This one comes down and it joins this one. You see? We have a remainder of one. What happens to that one? That one goes and joins this one and becomes eleven. It becomes eleven. Eleven has five twos. Five twos are ten. After we take away 10 from the 11, we have a remainder of 1 one more time. What happens to that one? That one goes and joins this 4, becomes 14. That one goes and joins this 4. This 4 comes down and joins it, it becomes 14. And 14 has 7 2's. 7 2's are 14. And now, we take care of our decimal. The decimal was after the 3, right here, so it moves here. 3.14 divided by 2 is 1.57. That's this part. All you have to do now is to take our answer of 1.57 and multiply it by 9. So let's do that. Let's do that. So we take our 1.57, which for the time being we're going to leave it as, as this, and multiply it by 9. 9 7s are 63. 9 7s are 63. 3, there is 6. And how do we know that 9 7s are 63? Again, same as before. Same exact thing as before. How do we know? That 9 7s are 63, same logic, same rationale, same reason as before, because we know that 10 7s, 10 7s are 70. Everybody knows that. 10 times 7 is 70. 10 7s are 70. We don't want 10 7s, we only want 9 7s. Well, if you want 9 7s, just take away 1 7. We, we are interested in 9 7s. 9 7s are, well, how much are 9 7s going to be? Well, whatever the 10 7s were, take away 1 7 for a minute and you'll have 9 7s. If 70 represents 10 sevens, if you were to take away one seven from it, it returns to reason that whatever is remaining, whatever is remaining, uh, remaining there, must represent nine seven. The sum of nine sevens, nine sevens are whatever 70 minus seven is. 70 minus seven is 63. Right, nine sevens are 63. Nine sevens are 63. Three, carry six. Five nines are five nines are 40. Uh, five nines are 45 rather. Five nines are 45 plus a six is 51. One. Carry 5. Again, how do we know that 5 9s are 45? Because 5 10s are 50. 5 10s are 50. 5 10s are 50. So 5 9s must be 1, one, one 5 less than 50, which is 45. We are almost done. 9 1s are 9 plus 5 is 14. And now we take care of our decimal. Decimal was here, 1.57, 1.57, after two digits, 1 and 2, so we decimal is right now here, we move it up, 1, 2, 14.13, 14.13 is exactly what we had before. How you go about it makes absolutely no difference at all. How do you go about doing a calculation makes absolutely no difference at all, provided, give, provided that you can do it. In a reasonable amount of time. You don't have a lot of time during the exam, so you have to practice, practice, and practice again until you build the confidence and the speed and accuracy. You have to have the confidence in yourself, you have to have this reasonable amount of speed, and most importantly, the speed by itself is of no good if everything that you do or half the stuff that you do is wrong. It's a speed and accuracy. It's a nice balance between the two, it's a nice dance between the two. You cannot have one at the expense of the other. You cannot go very slowly and get the, all the questions that you do right and find out that you are only able to do only half the questions. You have to have the speed and accuracy. So that's your final answer. The area of this guy is right here, about 68 square feet. 68 square feet or 68.13 square foot. Even 68.13 is not an exact value, it's an approximate value. And why is it an approximate value, uh, uh, value for an area? because we are using 3.14 for the pi. We are not using the exact value for pi. Why aren't we using the exact value of pi? Because nobody in the world knows what it is. It's an irrational number. Do you understand? I'll see you tomorrow. Bye now.